children. My name is Sylvia Oshakwade, and you can call me Auntie Sylvia. We is happy to be here today with us. I'm sure you are. How have you been? And how has school been? I'm sure you've been doing great at school, isn't it? All right then. Good to have you on another beautiful Sunday. Yes, we are here to worship God and we are here to learn from the Bible and to learn the Word of God. So it's time for service, you know. So call your friends, your sisters, everyone around you to put on their dancing shoes. Yes, it's online, but we are going to have an awesome time in the presence of God. But before we continue, can we say a word of prayer? Put your hands together and close your eyes. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for bringing us together to, again at your presence. We are here to worship you. We are here to praise your name. And we are here to hear and learn from your word. Teach us, O oh Lord. Let your word have positive impacts and yield positive fruits in our lives, making us better children, making us respectful children, and making us obedient children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So once again, I welcome you to another beautiful edition of Service Online today. Before we continue again, we are ready to go for our praise and worship. You know what praise and worship is, isn't it? The time we dance and say, thank you, Jesus. I'm sure Jesus has done something beautiful for you and you are ready to praise and you are ready to worship him. So come on, let's go praise God.
Welcome back from praise and worship. Hope you had a wonderful time. And I hope you danced, right? Yeah, I can hear you say, yeah, I danced and I had a wonderful time at God's presence. I danced too. Wow, can't you see how I'm sweating? Because it's good to praise and worship God. There we have the opportunity to say, thank you, Jesus, for my new shoes. Thank you, Jesus, for my school. Thank you, Jesus, for my new sandal and new toy. Yes, that's when we say thank you. And I'm sure that our praise has ascended to God as a sweet smelling savour. Wow. All right. Today, we will be looking at one of God's commandments. Actually, it's God's first commandment, the commandment he gave to the children of Israel. And that is our, our topic for today, God's first commandment. Um, who knows what that commandment is? Do you want to tell me? All right then, just hold on, let me tell you. Our topic for today says, Thou shalt have no other God before me. Wow! And that's God's first commandment to the children of Israel. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Isn't that interesting? Why will God say that? And what does it mean to have another God? Like, what is the meaning of God? We are going to be reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 19, 16 to 26. There is a very interesting story there. Come on, let's open our Bible, the New Living Translation, to the book of Matthew, chapter 19, 16 to 26. Let's hear what that says. Someone came to Jesus with the question, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Why ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, There is only one who is good. But to answer your question, if you want to receive eternal life, keep the commandments. Which ones? The man asked. And Jesus replied, You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. Honor your father and mother. Love your neighbor as yourself. I've obeyed all these commandments. The young man replied, What else must I do? Jesus told him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. But when the young man heard this, he went away sad for he had many possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it is very hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. I'll say it again, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Disciples were astounded. Then who in the world can be saved? They asked. Jesus looked at them intently and said humanly speaking it is impossible but with god everything is possible isn't that an interesting read and jesus referred to his commandments there are several commandments jesus said we should keep he said do not steal do not murder do not testify falsely. But all of this, 
the man in the story kept them. But there was one more thing. Jesus told him to sell all his possessions and then come follow him. He made the young man very sad. And that is what we are going to talk about today. Probably his possessions were his God. He found it difficult to let go. Mm. But remember our topic, thou shalt have no other gods before me. What can we call a God? Sometimes, the things that we love so dearly can become a God. The things that we worship can become a God. Even sometimes the things that we pray to can become a God. Is that right? No. I'm thinking, for example, you have a toy you love so dearly, but when it's time to go to church, you don't want to leave your toy. You want to keep playing. That toy has become a God to you. Okay, is it Cartoon Network? It's time for Bible study. It's time for church. But you don't want to leave the television. You want to watch your interesting channel. Mm, that has become a God. Something you love so much than serving God than worshipping God. This makes God very sad. When you love anything more than Him, it becomes a God to you. Yes, we can play with our toys. Yes, we can love, you know, have some interesting TV programs to watch. But it shouldn't be more than the love we have for God because it makes Him very, very unhappy and jealous and that is what happened to that young man he kept all the other commandments but he loved his possessions he loved his money and he couldn't let go he couldn't let go to follow god he couldn't let go to follow jesus are you thinking of something is there a toy you love so much you can't let go is there something you love so much that you are almost worshipping? When you don't see it, you feel sad. Like that young man who felt sad when Jesus told him to sell all his possessions. That is not what God wants from us. As a child of God, it should be number one. It should be the priority. Whenever mommy and daddy say, it's time to go to church. You leave everything. You leave your cartoon. You leave your toy. Yes. You've played with it enough, isn't it? But it's time to pray. It's time to go to church. It's time to read your Bible. And it's time for service online. Okay, some people were still playing with their toys as I was teaching, isn't it? Hmm. Don't let it be your God. Because God is a jealous God. He wants to be the only God in your life. Are there other things I didn't mention? It's not only your toy. Maybe there is a dress. Aha! Uh -huh. That beautiful dress. And you're like, that's the only dress I like to wear to church. And if you don't have that dress, you won't want to go to church. No. You have several dresses. You can pick anyone. Or is it that your shoe? That your beautiful shoe? You only want to wear that shoe to church, to school. And when mommy or daddy say, there is another one, you say, no, 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 no. If I don't get this shoe, I won't go to church. I won't go to school. That's not right. Because you are making that shoe your God. Or you are making that dress your God. There shouldn't be anything that takes the place of God in your life. And that is what God wants us to learn. Number one, He wants to be the only God in your life. He wants you to talk to Him. He wants you to pray to Him. Like in some times past, some people, instead of them to close their eyes and pray to God, they will carve images from wood, 
they will carve images from stones and they will be praying to those things. They are not living things. They cannot hear. They cannot speak. But they became idol. God was not happy with them. Yes, that is why God brought the commandments for the children of Israel. They had idols they were worshipping. And God told them, Thou shalt not have any other God before me. Okay? So children, do you promise me you will love only God? He will be your only God, your only father that you can talk to, that you can go to any time you need anything from. He's ready to listen to you. He's ready to teach you. I mean, because he's your God, he will guide you, he will protect you. He doesn't want to share your, his time or your time with anybody or anything. He doesn't want to share his attention. I mean, you can love people around you, but don't let it be more than the love you have for God. I hope you have learned something today. Because just like the man we read his story in the book of Matthew chapter 19, yes, he's not doing all those things that makes you a good person. But loving God with all your heart is what makes you a child of God. Not having any other God before him is what makes you a child of God. And God is, is at is very big to accommodate you, to love you back in return. So I hope that you will know that your shoes, your toys, the cartoon network or any other thing cannot take the place of God in your life. And I'm sure everything that you do, you will put God first. I hope we've learned something today. But before we leave, we are going to take our memory verse. Who is ready for our memory verse? It's actually very easy and simple. It's almost like our topic today. So our memory verse is from Exodus chapter 20 verse 3 from the King James Version. And it says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Can we take it again? Our memory verse is from Exodus chapter 20 verse 3 and it says, Thou shalt have no other God beside me. Can I hear you say it again? Exodus chapter 20 verse 3 and it says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Wow, isn't that easy and simple? All right, so I hope you have learned something today. Don't forget, your memory verse is for you to recite it over and over and over again so that it's in your memory and you can say it just like I did without looking at your Bible. Do you want to try it with me? Would you close your eyes or just, you know, say it with me? So let's take it one more time again. Our memory verse is from the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 3. And it says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Wow! It's been an interesting time and I hope you've learned a lot. Yes, don't forget our topic. Just like our memory verse says, Thou shalt have no other God before me. God loves you. He doesn't want you to share his love or his attention with any other thing. He wants to be the priority in your life because he wants to make you also 
the priority in his life. Not making anything an idol, not your shoes, not your toys, not your cartoon. I know this is going to be difficult, but I know you can do it. Just tell yourself, when it's time for church, I'm going to switch off the TV and come to church or go for my online service. When it's time for church, when it's time for anything important, I will not make any other thing an idol. I will only make God my only God. I hope you've enjoyed today's service. Thank you for being a part of today's teaching. Hope to see you again next week Sunday. Remember our memory verse? Exodus chapter 20 verse 3. It says, Thou shalt have no other God before me. I pray that no other thing will take the place of God in your life. Do have a wonderful time and see you again next week. Bye-bye.